Okay, everybody, I'm Ben Bogey. I'm here with you today to uh, work together in partnership with Huber and JLC Live to put together a couple of videos for you. I'm working with some of Zip Systems products. Since we can't all be together uh, for JLC Live this year, we wanted to give you something uh, to be able to kind of stay abreast of what's going on in the industry and give you some pointers and tips on how to work with some of these products. So today what I'm gonna be doing is walking you through uh, Zip Systems liquid flashing. Uh, I'm a big fan of liquid flashing um, or fluid applied membranes because it does a couple of things for you. Uh, one, it's incredibly bulletproof. Uh, it forms a monolithic membrane with no laps, no joints, no penetrations uh, to give you a really durable waterproofing. Um, what this product is, is it's called an STPE, Silly Terminated Polyether. This polymer is really robust, really long lasting, um, and it's a really great choice for uh, difficult penetrations, uh, difficult to flash areas, tying into old existing flashings and weather control membranes, um, and just all around a, a great class of products to use for providing a really durable, watertight uh, assembly for your buildings. So it comes in a couple of different uh, form factors. So here's a 29 ounce tube, comes in your standard 10 ounce tubes. And then my preferred choice is these. These are a sausage pack. Uh, I like these one because I like the guns that uh, dispense this product. And also I like the fact that at the end of using this product, I'm only left with this little aluminum foil puck to throw out. So I have less waste in my dumpsters and garbage cans on the site. I'm contributing less into the waste stream. Uh, it just makes for cleaner, easier to handle product. So I get asked a lot um, how I stay clean when working with this product because a lot of people who have used this product say that it's messy. Uh, it's not messy. The, the truth about this scenario is, is that the only thing that's messy is your habits and how you're working with it. So some ways to stay clean and keep tidy with this product when you're using it. Um, First and foremost, gloves. So, standard nitrile job site gloves, whatever you have around, latex. Let's keep it off of your hands so you're not having to scrub at the end of the day to get it off of your hands. And then, the biggest tip I can give you in staying clean with this stuff is having a rag with mineral spirits around. So what I do, is I just get myself regular cotton painter's rag, Soak it with some mineral spirits. I just keep this handy in my as I'm working. So what I want to do as I'm working with the product, I want to try and do everything I can to wipe up any stray little bits that get around, wipe off the nozzles, wipe off the spreaders as I go. So as far as how to spread the product, uh, these are zip system spreaders. Uh, you don't have to use the zip spreader. This is basically just a Bondo or uh, automotive body filler spreader. Uh, you can get from your local automotive store, hardware store. Disposable plastic putty knives work really great. Uh, those are a good choice. I like to usually have a couple of sizes of those around. Uh, and basically you're just looking for some form of spatula tool that's going to allow you to spread the product once you get it applied to the substrate. So a uh, couple of more specialized ones that I like to have on hand. These are artist palette knives. Uh, you know, artists use these to mix paints on their palettes. Uh, I like to keep a couple of these around because these allow me to work into little tight spots and detail little corners and stuff like that. These are not critical, uh, but these are nice to have around, like I said, for a really clean, neat uh, installation. So let me walk you through a little bit about what I have here for prep. So typical window opening. In this case, we're going over uh, Huber's Zip R12 panel. So we have two inches of polyisofoam here and then the Zip system integrated weather resistive barrier sheathing on the outside. So what I like to do is I like to uh, install jam liners um, to protect the edge of the foam. I also do this, we build large thick walls. So this allows me to uh, in one shot uh, make this situation right here watertight. So I just cut some, in this case, half inch zip panel, install it into the opening. And then what that means is in order for me to have an airtight and weather tight uh, jam or door opening, all I have to do is detail this edge right here. And we'll talk about that a little bit further as we go along. 
the next step I want to do is, is I want to try and introduce some form of pitch onto the sills of my windows here. And what this means is that any water that eventually gets through that window or through our flashings or through the assembly and down and onto this sill, it's going to get forced out by having some pitch on here. In this case, I have a piece of half by six uh, bevel siding. Uh, alternatively, you can use a piece of plywood or zip system in here and pitch it. Uh, another quick down and dirty method is, is you can just take in framing and cut five degrees, something like that on the top of your uh, cripples underneath your sills and pitch them. Or you can come along after you're done, knock the back edge of your sills up, drive a couple of shims in above your cripples and create some pitch. Really all we're doing is just trying to put some slope to this to force the water out and down out of our assembly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install a piece of beveled siding here. I take two more little pieces of the same bevel siding. What I'm going to do is I'm going to install these upside down about an inch and a half in, two inches in from the edge. And what this does is this gives me a flat level surface that I can then install my window on. So I have this pitched area here managing the bulk of the water that will ever get through the assembly down and out, but I'm giving myself a nice solid level place for me to install my windows on top of um, and give them a good footing. What I have now is I have a prepped opening ready for liquid flashing. So at this point, we're ready to start installing liquid flashing into the opening. So what I like to do is I like to start on my inside corners and put a bead here because this is where I need to make sure that I've built material. And I want to bring my flashing membrane up the side here. Whenever you have the chance, try and wipe the tip of your gun off. So now I've got my inside corners done. What I'm going to do is just start to lay out some beads of material. One thing I haven't mentioned yet, another reason I like this product is uh, I'm in Maine and we seem to <laughs> always end up uh, installing windows often on builds in the middle of winter. This product works really good in cold temperatures. Uh, Zip Systems recommendation is, is 32 degrees and climbing. I've used it at temperatures below that and the only thing that happens is it takes a little bit longer for it to cure. Uh, and the other nice bonus about this is, is you can use this when the surfaces are wet. So a lot of times you'll come in in the morning and it will have rained the night before or be raining. Generally when we were using a, a taped membrane we'd have to wait for that surface to dry out. So you might lose a day, a couple of days to weather, having to wait for that surface to be dry. Even the dew in the morning that forms on the sills and surfaces can cause you to not be able to get a good application with a, a tape membrane. This product, all you need to do is just wipe the standing water off the surface. It can still be wet. It actually cures better with moisture present. It's a moisture cure product. So that's a nice bonus. You don't have any downtime with this product because of weather or because of temperature. Everything's looking nice and smoothed out. Now this is where that little artist palette knife comes into play that I showed you before. So in this case, I'm generally doing this from the outside of the window, but I'm showing you today from me standing inside of the window, uh, just so that I'm not having my back to you. This is where that little palette knife comes into play. It allows you to get right into here into the corners and it's tough to reach areas. Put a little fillet in that corner. Spread the material out. So now we've got our sill treated and what we need to do is we need to bring this material out onto the face and down onto the face. So try and do this without blocking the shot too much for you guys. So what I'm going to do is just use a little bit of painter's tape. It'll give a nice clean presentation as your clients come through the project, they see that you're exerting a level of care on their project. Other subcontractors, employees seeing that you're exerting this level of care and it instills in them the idea that maybe they need to do the same. The other area that's critical is the sharp edges of your corners here. And a trick that I've found um, 
I can pass on to you. If you take, and as you drag across, if you hold your blade at a little bit of an angle, what it'll do is you'll drag along and it'll deposit. You can see this little ribbon of material that's forming on the back edge of my blade right there. So what that's doing is it's forcing a little bit of extra material at that very edge. This is going to be the critical spot here. This is where you're likely to get the thinnest application is right at that edge. So if it folds over this little ribbon right here, then all I can do is take and I just kind of pull that ribbon back down and smooth it out a little bit. And it leaves just a little bit of a thicker level of material right here at the edges. Hopefully this has given you guys a good quick rundown of some tips and tricks that I've come up with over the years of working with this product. Like I said, it's a super robust method for detailing penetrations and waterproofing and handling your flashings. Uh, alternatively, once this is cured up, what I can do is I can come back with some regular three inch or three and three quarter inch tape and detail out this joint right here. It's not a bad idea to detail out this inside corner. That way you're not just getting a uh, a watertight surface, but you're getting an airtight surface at that point as well. And then we're ready to install our window and have a really robust long-term lifespan out of this window assembly and have no concerns over its quality. Thanks guys.